from San Francisco, California. This is the Rock and Roll Geek Show. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name is Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, August, what is today? 16th, 2023, and it is 9.56 p.m. when I'm recording this episode. This is day 16 of the Dog Days of Podcasting, where me and a bunch of podcast nerds attempt to do a show every day for the entire month of August, and we're halfway through. This is going to be the last um, Manitoba update for the Dog Days. I'm going to start doing shows in the afternoons because I got more time. When When I do one late at night i just don't have much time i was at uh acdz practice tonight i've got a gig on saturday with ac this band acdz uh it's an acdc cover band obviously hold on let me take a sip of this fine tecate i'm back on the computer in san francisco by the way on my regular rig let me take a sip of this fine tecate oh god the six one of the day mm. the past yeah, so I had ACDZ practice. Uh, we had a gig on Saturday. ACDZ is an ACDC cover band consisting of uh, the lead singer of Exodus, Steve Zetter Souza, the drummer of uh, De- the current drummer for Death Angel, Will Carroll, um, Dave Chapman on guitar, and usually it's Joel on rhythm guitar. But we got this guy Gus who's filling in for Joel because Joel had hand surgery, which is why the Butlers have have had to turn down a bunch of gigs. Uh, this guy, Gus, <coughs> invented the Line 6 wireless, believe it or not, uh, and that's what I play. So, yeah, we rehearsed today. I got a gig on Saturday. I was not too good at rehearsal. Um, I've been in, in Dictator's Manitoba mode for the past, you know, several months, and um, now i got to get back into ACDZ mode. But I, we practiced. I made a few mistakes. Not too bad. And I got a couple days to go over them before the gig. The gig is on Saturday. I took Manitoba back to the airport today at uh, around noon. His flight was at 2.30. <clears throat> I had to start a job today, so I, I pressure washed in the morning, and, and Manitoba got up. He was up when I got back from work. Oh, I'm tired. God, oh, man, I'm on no sleep. On no sleep. I, I'm working my ass off. So I got him back um, last night, probably went over this last night, but we recorded um, vocals to back on Broadway. I have to do some cleaning up on him because my punch-ins are terrible and I got to, I got to, yeah, I don't, I don't know how to work logic, but uh, so when we were hanging out after, um, after we, after we um, recorded, I looked on my Facebook and somebody posted this article from the LA Weekly, LA Weekly Music Review. By the way, uh, Manitoba did a, f- I, I paid this PR person um, to get our, the name out there to try to get some people to the shows. And LA Weekly did a, um, it's, they have a section or, or a, what do you call it? A, um, a column called Favorite Albums. And uh, Manitoba did his favorite album, which was, ooh, I'm sorry for yawning. I'm going to put you to sleep too if I keep yawning. He did a uh, his favorite album, and at the time it was, um, I think it was, it, it was a it was a Kinks album, and I don't remember which one it was. He said it's his favorite song is Waterloo Sunset, but it's not on that album. Anyway, uh, so this co- popped up on the Facebook. I don't know who who uh, sent this. It was on the Rock and Roll Geek Facebook group. A handsome Dick says, "Handsome." It's from the L.A. Weekly. It is a L.A. Weekly music review. Handsome Dick flexes in Long Beach. Now, if you remember when I, if you've been listening to these dog days, when I did a show from uh, San Diego, I was talking about uh, the Long Beach show sucked, that I had a really shitty gig and I felt like nobody liked us and the hipsters. So here's a review of that show. <clears throat> Handsome, it's called Handsome Dick Flexes in Long Beach. Handsome Dick flexes in Long Beach. In May of this year, Brit punk icons The Dam performed at the Belasco and the Dictators opened for them. However, quite a few people who were at that show were surprised when the New York proto-punks took the stage and Handsome Dick Manitoba was not fronting them. 
By the way, I'm reading Amy Forte, so I'm going to do my best to read this little bit of reading with Butler. This writer spoke to the dictator's Andy Chernoff in 2021 for the sister paper of the L.A. Weekly, The Village Voice. And he said that, quote, we want to make music and we need a healthy, creative environment. You inject Manitoba into that and it changes the dynamics in a very, very bad way. All right, let me take a sip of this fine Tecate. Ah, this guy's a pretty good writer. Brett Cowood is his name. All right, far be it for us to tell people who they should and shouldn't get along with. And to be fair, the show with the dam wasn't horrible. It was actually very professionally po- a very professional, polished version of what the Dictators was. But after seeing Handsome Dick Manitoba perform solo in Long Beach on Saturday night, we're reminded of the fact that the Dictators should not be polished. Part of the glory of the original band was that Andy Chernoff was and is a fucking masterful songwriter. He can switch between power pop and glitter stomp and punk tude seamlessly. But by God, the yin to that yang was always the no bullshit, super funny, charismatic frontman, handsome dick. I've been saying this over and over to everybody. <laughs> and it's so true. The face of the dick. Andy Chernoff. I'm, I'm not reading now. I'm commenting. Andy Chernoff is one of the greatest songwriters, in my opinion, at least he's possibly the best punk rock songwriter of all time. Him and Dee Dee Ramone, Daniel Ray wrote some good songs too. But the face of the dictators are Ross the Boss and Handsome Dick Manitoba. Okay, back to the article. Part of the glory of the original band was that sure enough was and is a fucking masterful songwriter. He can switch between power pomp and power pop and glitter stomp and punk too seamlessly. But by God, the yin to that yang was always the no bullshit, super funny, charismatic frontman, handsome dick. The man is a showman with a punchy voice and the ability to lovingly insult a crowd. The, okay, he's like Rodney Dangerfield and D. Snyder verbally sparring inside the same mind before a WWE bout. That's no bad thing. Manitoba addresses his being kicked out of the dictators and not being included in the reunion in Long Beach, but he doesn't come across as bitter. Rather, he takes the opportunity to remind us all that sometimes when bad things happen, good things can be just around the corner. Uh, when Manitoba was talking about that at the show, he, he said, um, Michael, if I go too far, tell me to stop. And he started talking about it, and I went, stop, because <laughs> I thought you know he was going to piss. I thought he, he was... I thought he he might go too far, and it was kind of a joke too on stage. Where am I here? <clears throat> he addresses his being kicked out of the band, okay, uh, but he doesn't come across as bitter. Rather, he takes the opportunity to remind us all that sometimes when bad things happen, good things can be just around the corner. Handsome Dick, here it comes, friends. Handsome Dick, with the help of bass player Michael Butler, has assembled a killer band. Manitoba and Butler are joined by drummer Andy Gallian from Death Angel and guitarist Craig Bearhorst and Alex, and Alex Kane. There, there were moments on Saturday when Manitoba, between vocal bursts, could only stand and admire his musicians. He looked like he could barely believe his luck, and he actually said that this is the best band he's ever played with, despite the fact that, bless his soul, he had to read their names off a piece of paper. Somehow, some way, Manitoba has struck gold. Did you hear that? <laughs> now, do you believe everything you read? No, but I'm going to read that again. There were moments on Saturday when Manitoba, between vocal bursts, could only stand and admire his musicians. He looked like he, looked like he could barely believe his luck, and he actually said that this is the best band he's ever played with, despite the fact that, bless his soul, he had to read their names off a piece of paper. Somehow, some way, Manitoba has struck gold. Mind you, so have the band members. Rarely will they get to perform with a frontman who was so fundamental in the creation of punk rock, crossing the divide between glam and punk. The joints might be stiff nowadays, but the fire is still there. I can count the pioneers of punk rock on one hand. That's how many are still alive. What do you got? You got Iggy. You got Handsome Dick Manitoba. You got Dave Johansson. Who else? I'm sure there's a few more, but Handsome Dick is up there. The guy is one of the originators, friends. 
All of which is apparent throughout the set. Heavy on the dictator's tunes with a couple of Manitoba's Wild Kingdom. The opening New York, New York, and the following party starts now on a couple of covers. Manitoba entered the stage to the theme from The Godfather, wearing a boxer's gown and shades and ready to go. Those righteous Wild Kingdom songs were an inspired way to start the show. Though dictator's classics such as Baby Let's Twist, Stay With Me, and Who Will Save Rock and Roll were a joy to hear in this environment. The next big thing in Two Tub Men from the perfect Go Girl Crazy debut were predictable highlights while the closing kick out the jams is a reminder that Manitoba fronted the reformed MC5, then dubbed DKT MC5 for a while. Throughout it all, Manitoba took every opportunity to tell stories and occasionally mess with the crowd. He had us chant a message for his son, a Marine, which he recorded on his phone. He mocked the Dodgers World Series win and made seemingly random comments about nobody goes to jail anymore. The Long Beach crowd loved him for it because, hey, Manitoba's gonna Manitoba. There you go. I'd say that's a pretty fucking great review, man. And I thought that show sucked. <clears throat> that review, reading that review made me feel really good. And I told Manitoba, Richard, you're going home a conquering hero. Those guys are going to read that article and know that they got to get you back in the band. Yes, I said that. I could have been selfish and want to keep going with Manitoba and have us as his band, which I do, actually. There, By the way, there are some um, East Coast shows that we're talking about. Um, he, w he doesn't want to play them unless we're in his band. So we got to get figure out how we can uh, get out there and uh, get us a couple of bucks. And, uh, yeah, and find some gear for us to play on. So hopefully it'll happen. That's happened at the beginning of November. But ultimately, I want to see Handsome Dick Manitoba back where he belongs in the Dictators. Will it happen? Probably not. So the next best thing is having him behind, having us behind him. I love the man. Like I said, this is going to be the last Dictators update, but I truly love handsome dick manitoba he's become a really close friend and uh yeah what can i say i love the guy all right friends i'll talk to you tomorrow i spun the itunes wheel and up came a band called the boatsman now i know nothing about this band uh i think it was sent to me by a pr company a couple of years ago it came out in 2021 the song that came up is called thirst song by the boatsman. Hey, I spin the wheel, and this is what comes up. So let it let the chips fall where they may. Thank you for listening. You know how you can reach me. Rockandrollgeek.com is where you can find the show. It's a value for value. So if you get any value out of this, please, friends, contribute what you think it's worth to you. And if you don't get any value out of it, if you think me saying uh, running gags like um, you guys got to answer two questions or let me take a sip of this fine Tecate and go, Ah, if you think that's lame and it bums you out and you get no value out of this, don't donate anything. But if you like it and it gives you any value, I ask that you just um, help support the show any way you can, friends. You can either buy financial donation, uh, calling into the show with audio comments, calling other shows and promoting this show, or... I don't know, send me, a, send me a box of chocolate in the mail or something. Whatever value it is to you, I just ask that you repay that value. You don't get any ads on this show. No uh, depression, no online therapists, no foot powder, no, no erection cream or anything like that. You're the, you're the sponsor, friend. All right, enough of that plugging. Here's The Boatsman. I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm going to do an earlier show tomorrow, and I got a Rick Springfield show review. Uh, I got that long show review from Casey, too, and, and Chris Capel called him with a Metallica show review. And I got a few other things I can could use your your calls, record it into your phone, and send it to me, rockandrollgeek at gmail.com. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Here's The Boatsman.
It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. <laughs> 